Hi everyone, welcome to a very special edition of News Dabs with Jimmy Young at the DCU Center in Worcester, the site of this year's Harvest Cup. I am again reporting for Pro Cannabis Media Group and ProCannabisMedia.com. I'm Sherry Tuckus from the Green Nurse Group. And so happy you've joined us on News Dabs. I'm so happy to be here, Jimmy. You know, there's been a couple of news items over the last few days, so I want to get to them right away. And it's all involving this vaping crisis. First of all, the CDC has finally identified a single product that is, shouldn't be in those vapes, and it's vitamin E acetate. And if you remember last week on News Dabs, Sherry told us all about why that product is so dangerous. Yes, it's very dangerous. That, as well as the cadmium in those cartridges that can leach metals into the oil, and people are vaporizing microscopic particles of hot metal, which can burn their lungs. So it's really, really great. We got a breaking news, right, about MCR Labs. MCR Labs, tell me about what the breaking news is with them. So, and breaking news, MCR Labs is so kindly and graciously offered to test people's vape cartridges for these heavy metals and for vitamin E acetate. So that's all consumers. You can go to MCR Labs yes. and find out where they are and then either send it to them or go to their lab. Yes, yes. I will call them up first to yep. find out what the rules are. <laughs> yeah, that would make <laughs> I don't sense. Want, I don't want everyone Big driving over there. there. Right, right. Right, I know the line will be long out right. the door. So find out what their you know, their criteria is for mm -hmm. testing the cartridges, but they are doing that. And there was a um, woman here that I spoke to at the event who actually did do that. And one of the cartridges that she purchased on the illicit market indeed did have the vitamin E acetate in it. Wow, So that's scary. Yeah. And this is a medical patient that I know, and you know, she came up to me and told me, she goes, I took, I got my cartridge on the market because I need my cartridge. I yeah. can't, you know, people can't smell it. This is what I need for my medicine. However, now that MCR Labs was offering to test it, I brought it there and indeed it tested positive yeah, for vitamin E acetate. Anybody. Now, meanwhile, here in Massachusetts, the Cannabis Control Commission is in control of whether or not they will extend the vape ban in this state or not. That decision will come down in the next 48 hours because we are recording this on location at the Harvest Cup on Sunday, November 10th. See, I dated it. I didn't think I was going to, but I just did because that is the fact. It's the fact. Uh, medical patients, you already ran into one that you know uses the cartridges to ingest their medicine. Correct. It's in the hands of the Cannabis Control Commission. Do you think, and again, your opinion, you, we don't have any inside information, do you think they will extend the ban or lift it for medical patients? I really hope that they listen to the patients, the medical patients that need this, and that they lift the ban. Because this is not seen all over. It's seen in a small population, and we're not seeing it in dispensaries. Right. Where patients can get their vaporizers. Right. And of course, we're talking about those medical dispensaries, but also the adult use dispensaries. And one in Uxbridge is Caroline's. And needless to say, oh, right. it, this vaping ban has hurt her business. Right, so I'm a small business owner and I have to buy products. Um, so I'm sitting on a significant amount right now. Um, so as a small business owner, having, having to really deal with this, uh, it was a big blow. That's 24% of our market um, was vapes. Um, and to have it happen so fast and, and not being able to prepare for it with any warning, um, it has had effect on us for, as a small business owner. This was the scene at the DCU Center in Worcester over this past weekend for the third annual Harvest Cup. The premier competition in the state, thousands flocked to the city of Seven Hills, which is fast becoming the heart and soul of the cannabis world. And the Harvest Cup is the highlight in Worcester. Well, that's where this whole idea came from, was to find the best, you know, products in America and, and or New England at this point, we're limited on what we can do, but my goal is, uh, you yeah, to find the best products out there and have them showcased. Coming in first place for the Indica Flowers of the 2019 Harvest Cup, the final award we're going to be giving out this year. interested in just doing what I like doing. I'm not here to kind of make you happy or him happy or anybody happy. I do what makes me happy. And going in the morning doing this is my job is what makes me happy. 
You know, Sherry, the Harvest Cup wasn't the only cannabis-friendly event in the greater Boston area this weekend. I didn't know that. That's what I'm here for. Well, I'm so glad. Tell me. When was the last time you were at a wedding expo? Don't answer Probably that question. Probably a long time ago. <laughs> me too. All right. It was indeed the first annual Cannabis Wedding Expo. It took place in Cambridge at the Sheraton Commander. Colorado-infused catering legend Phil Wolf is the organizer of that event, and this expo is just another example of the mature Colorado and West Coast expos and conventions that are making their way to the Northeast. Obviously, there's a growth opportunity in this region. I couldn't be happier for the cannabis community that showed up in the East Coast for our debut. I mean, all the people and seeing all the creativity that's happening right now is unbelievable, and to see, you know, how far Boston has come in its first year of legalization is really special and to see where it's going is even more special. Best Indica strain was just one of 11 categories. Best Sativa, CBD, topicals and edibles were all up for grabs. One of our pro cannabis media friends, Laura Heward from Hole in the Wall won for Best South. Congratulations, Laura. It's a great feeling of satisfaction because I'm my worst critic and to be able to have award-winning skincare is is huge for me. It really built my confidence up and just made me not ever want to give up. I want to keep helping people. I want to keep healing people. Um, but I also think that it made a lot of people take me more serious. You know, they, they understand that I'm in it for the long haul and I just want to get you some top quality products. So how important are shows like the Harvest Cup here and the educational component that comes along with a B to C show as opposed to a B to B show, Sherry? Well, education is extremely important. What we're finding is there are a lot of misinformed people. There's a lot of information and a lot of misinformation. There's an overwhelming amount of information. Yes, and there's a lot of conflicting information. So um, the educational programs at these events are evolving nicely. We had a man that we've worked with, Dr. Um, I'm sorry, Darren Stephen Miller, who was from Illinois, and he was here to share his compelling story of healing from stage four lung cancer and pericardial heart cancer. Wow. So he is completely, he is completely cancer free. His MS is in remission. So these are educational things that people need to hear. So he was sharing a story about how he made the plant work for him mm -hmm. and the difference between medical and recreational. So he was, he was really pivotal. So these types of education is what patients need to hear, people need to hear. And pro-cannabis media pro is here to tell those stories. To tell those stories. You know, these anecdotal, this is what we have to live on right now, the anecdotal stories as we move into more regulations so that we can do more research well, on those products. Yes, and I agree, Jimmy. One of the most important things that I like to say about that is these anecdotal stories is what should be driving research. Right, because how many times have you heard, cannabis has saved my life, cannabis has changed my life? I'm, I'm one of those. It saved my life and it changed my life. There you go. And you know what, folks? One of the things I love about this particular industry are the people you meet. Sherry, this is your second co-anchor with me. I look forward to more. Thank you. That'll wrap it up for News Dabs. And remember, it's, it's a, a whole, whole new, new world, world of weed week. out there. Have a good week, and we will see you the next time on News Dabs. Right now, we're going to leave you with a few more cannabis-friendly events in the greater Boston area. News Dabs is a weekly production of the Pro Cannabis Media Group. It is supported by Alternative Compassion Services in Bridgewater, Massachusetts. ACS is a leading provider of medicinal cannabis at 693 Elm Street in Bridgewater.